Welcome to The Exchange. I'm Michelle Vino, Director of Community Resources at Caledon Community Services, and I'd like to take you on a tour of our facility, if you'll come with me. Uh, the Exchange was built in 2013, and within this space we have several programs that happen under our Community Supports Division. Uh, we have two caseworkers who work with clients one-on-one -on -one to address issues of poverty and marginalization, and uh, within that we have our food support program. But within this space there's a million other things that happen, so I'd like to walk through it with you and tell you a little bit more about what we do. The Exchange is actually a community connection centre. So while we do have social services in this space, we also had a, a lot of fun things for the community and uh, opportunities for people to get engaged on many, many different levels. This is our welcoming area. And within this space, we love to have people loiter. And so we invite community members to come in, whether they are here for programming, whether they're here to pick up food, whether they are here to have a cup of coffee, they don't care, we just want them in this space enjoying one another's company and learning about what's happening in our community. If you walk back with me, this is our very messy, but organized, chaotic receiving area. And so what happens within this space is, this is where community members come and donate products and food for our programming. And you can see there are many, many, many boxes here. We have an amazing partnership with the local community partner, Amazon, where they deliver products to us uh, on a monthly basis. And so we have many volunteers who are in this space who are sorting through to see what we can distribute back to the community. So at any given point in time, we will have not only corporate partners, but community members, uh, local donors, farmers who are constantly dropping off product for us to distribute. You can see over uh, in the corner, we have the capacity to store uh, meat and vegetables, fresh dairy, eggs, all those kinds of products that we distribute out to families who are most in need in our community. We have various levels of food throughout the year depending on uh, holidays and uh, donors who are running campaigns for us. And this is where we store all of our overstock. And so at many different points of the year, we have a lot of uh, items for distribution and then key areas of the year such as summer or times when there's non-holiday periods is when we seem to see our stock go lower. So we do require community donors to help us to keep our pantry stocked on a regular basis. Uh, without those donors, we would simply not be able to provide the vital supports that we do within the community. I'm going to take you back around and I want to show you our community kitchen. Within this space, we have a lot of interesting and fun events that happen in here. This space is really built for community, and so we can have corporate groups who come in to prepare food uh, as a team building event. We have youth coming into the facility to learn how to cook. We have um, participants from our language instruction to Newcomers to Canada come in and create really awesome ethnic meals. And we have a lot of other community groups with really interesting um, partnerships that come in and create co-design programs. Within this space, uh, you never know who's gonna be in here and you never know what's gonna be produced. We've had um, anything from smoothie workshops to brew your own to gingerbread making sessions for young children. And so this is really an area where we encourage people to let us know if they want to use the, the kitchen in any sort of way possible, and we try to make that happen. And then most of the food that is created within this space ends up back in our food pantry and actually supports those people who are accessing our food support program. So when a community group or a corporate group comes in and makes soup or lasagna, that same night that's on someone's table, providing them with a nourishing, uh, healthy meal. So it's a really great uh, playoff between creating a fun community event that has some really good results for those who are most in need. I'm going to take you quickly into our uh, food pantry. And this is what people would traditionally call a food bank. 
And we actually don't refer to it as food bank, we refer to it as a food support program. Our program is a little bit different than the traditional food bank in the sense that clients can come in and shop. And so um, at some food bank programs, items are pre-packaged, um, people don't necessarily have choice, but a big part of our program is that we allow clients to come in and get the items that they need for their family. Um, I'm not going to pack, uh, pack a box of food for someone if I don't know what their needs might be. And so people can come in and they can shop and they can pick the items that their kids like and that they know that they're going to eat. Um, and then they also can have access to fresh fruits and vegetables and meat and dairy and all those items that we get donated. And so the premise behind that is really around empowering people with choice. Um, we often get asked, what is the most uh, important item that we would like donated to our food support program? And I always say to people, what, what would you buy for your family? And if that's what your family needs, there's probably a good chance that those who are accessing our food support program need the same kind of items because people who are marginalized, who are needing support are no different than you and I. And so we try to get people to think in those terms. It's really difficult. Um, we get a lot of items such as pasta and pasta sauce and beans and if you have children, you know it's really difficult to send your kids with beans to school. And so we try to tell people, you know, what do your kids eat? Uh, that's exactly what we're looking for within the food support program. So things like kids snacks and cereal, coffee, you know, those things that uh, you take for granted sometimes every day. You wake up, you make yourself a cup of coffee. It's a way to start your day with a little bit of zip. Um, we don't typically get those items and so we try to encourage people to think on those terms that anybody who's accessing food support is no different than you and I. They need all the same things that we do. So try to steer people away from the traditional items. While we still accept them and we're grateful that, that you, you know, you're donating them, we try to steer people in the direction of um, creating a, a space that is more inclusive and, and empowering for clients to access. Caledon Community Services had a crisis support program for many years and it was offered out of our main location. And within that main location, we were never funded to be a food bank, but we were funded to be crisis support, which meant we were doing a lot of interventions and referrals out in the community. But because of community need and community generosity, we started to collect and distribute a large amount of food. So every part of our organization had cans of soup and macaroni and cheese throughout the office space. And what would happen is clients would come through once a month to pick up a prepackaged hamper and we determined that we weren't really having the impact that we wanted to have within the community. And so we looked at the program and said, what could we do to really help people who were experiencing poverty bring them out of poverty and help them get some additional supports to help them thrive in our community? And at the same time, we had a very generous um, community foundation that was closing its doors, the Grand Family Foundation. They had been excellent uh, partners with our organization for many years, and they offered us um, some money from the closing of their foundation, and, and we said to them, great, we can buy uh, you know, $100,000 worth of soup, that we will distribute it over the next six months, or we can take that and really invest it into a program that can have real impact in the community. And that's how this beautiful space, that's how the exchange was born. We had a lot of partners come on board at that time. This was in the 2011 period. Um, Mars Canada came in to support us, a couple local uh, home builders, and we created this big, beautiful space that is very open and engaging for the community. And one piece of that space, is our community supports program, which, which encompasses our food support program, our food bank. But within the space, we wanted to create something that was really an opportunity for community to come in, to be engaged, to learn about the challenges that exist in Caledon, um, and to help be part of that solution. So Caledon is a very um, affluent community. Uh, there are you know, people who have a lot of wealth, but there are also a lot of people who are really struggling. And so uh, often when you think of Caledon, people think everybody has a pony in their backyard, but that is simply not the case. We are seeing many struggling families walking through our doors who are really trying to make ends meet. The pandemic has uh, multiplied that 
by, by, you know, by 10. And so uh, it is really important for people to be able to access local supports, especially in this community where access is an issue. So uh, for those of you who aren't aware, Caledon has no public transportation system and so people needing to access supports don't have a lot of uh, access to get to where they need to go. And so the community supports program and the programs of the organization are really local based programs and local based solutions and, and that is why it is so key uh, within Caledon, within this geographical area, those supports are, are vital to so many. So I often get asked, what can people donate to our food support program or to the exchange? And this is a really good question because the traditional answer is food. Uh, we're always in need of food, people are always in need of food, and so I can tell you that those items that are most in need are the things that you would find in your own family pantry. Things for kids, such as snacks and cereal and juice boxes and um, things for moms and dads, like coffee is always an important thing. Personal hygiene items. Some of those expensive things at the grocery store that you don't think about donating when you're walking in the food bank. Um, with what has happened with food prices, with COVID, we are seeing families struggling, absolutely struggling to make ends meet like never before. So those high ticket items, toilet paper, paper towel are really um, important for families. But going past food, there are many other ways that people can give and get involved. The first thing I always say to people if you're considering donating to our program or to a food support program is cash is king. And the reason for that is if you give me $20, you can go to the store with that $20 and buy 15 uh, cans of soup, but I can take that and I can probably buy 40 because I'm able to bulk buy through my associations and through our partnerships that we have with different vendors in the community. And so when you make a financial donation to the organization, we have the ability to stretch that so much farther and feed so many more people. The other thing that we are always um, encouraging community to donate is grocery gift cards. And so part of our program, we have families come in and they shop for the items they need, but we also provide grocery gift cards. And the reason for that is, not everything is available in our pantry and it's really important for people to feel they have a choice and to provide what they need for their own specific families. So if you are considering donating, a grocery gift card can go a long way for a family to provide choice and empowerment. About those tangible items, um, we want in involvement and really the key to this space and the key to um, creating solutions that are long-term in our community is for people to get involved. And so we always invite people to come pop by. You don't need to make an appointment to come hang out with us, to loiter with us. We want to tour you around. We want to tell you about the programs and services and also about what the face of poverty looks like in Caledon because it looks very different in Caledon than it does in Brampton and Mississauga and in Toronto. And so we want community members to understand What's happening in my community? Who, who is my neighbor? Maybe my neighbor is in need. And so when people come in and they get a tour and they get an understanding of what's happening, they want to get involved. And that is amazing to us because when we have various stakeholders, diverse groups, different ages, looking at poverty and looking at marginalization, uh, some really interesting, innovative, creative solutions come through. And it also creates a community where people have more interest and take care of their neighbors. And that's really what we're trying to achieve here. So I invite people to come in to find out what we're doing. Get involved with social justice in Caledon. Just because it may not appear on every street corner, you may not see someone who's homeless. There are homeless people living in this community. And so learning about that, understanding that, getting involved, will be the key to this community thriving and making sure that um, no one goes in need.
The exchange offers really interesting ways to engage different groups within the community. And one really good example is our work with the local school boards. And uh, we have uh, many field trips that happen here within this space. One of the more interesting things that has happened recently is a partnership with St. Michael's Catholic School here in our community. The uh, humanities class has signed up to do rotating field trips with our organization in which the teacher is actually coming into our space and teaching her curriculum on site. That happens in the morning part of the day and then the rest of the day, the kids filter through the space to do different activities. And those activities include things like volunteering and sorting food that's coming in from our community, creating meals in our community kitchen, but also doing exercises on what poverty looks like, specifically in Caledon, and how they all have a responsibility to be a part of that solution. It's a really innovative way to engage kids in a, in a different way through the school system. We also have a lot of families that come through here to do uh, volunteering, and rather than having them walk through the door and sort cans of soup and leave, they actually walk through the facility and they get a sense of uh, who is accessing our services. And so the people that are coming into our food support program, as uh, you know, as I've said, is they're no different than you and I. And so it's families who are struggling to make ends meet, and, and um, there are a lot of them in our community. And bringing families in to sort and to get engaged uh, helps them understand that someone who's accessing food support might be their neighbor. We often do an activity with young kids when they come through and we talk about, do you think anybody that you know doesn't have breakfast in the morning? And they all say, no, everybody eats, we all have food and, and everybody you know, has a full lunch. And then we walk through an exercise where we count out um, every fifth child. And that fifth child is representative of every uh, fifth child in Peel goes hungry. And so it's a real eye-opener for kids to realize that not everybody has what they have. And that's a key engagement activity here within this space is to get to people to, um, to realize that um, poverty does not have a border. It does, not, uh, it does not discriminate against anybody. It really is just life circumstance that you can, you can be put into a situation um, that you never thought you'd have to be put into. Melody Belusa, and I've been um, uh, a volunteer at Caledon Community Services probably for about 14 or 15 years since we moved out from Toronto full time. And uh, it has been an amazing experience. I came to CCS and we, I started with um, the food bank at that point, and it was a food bank, I think, at that point, I, it was a, a room probably about 12 feet by 12 feet, and everything came out of that space. And then at Christmas time, I remember that my first Christmas was Santa Fund, and at Santa Fund we get food, clothing, chocolates, gifts, every, every client that comes in gets a, sh a shopping cart in it, but we had to rent space, and we rented a warehouse, and it was amazing, the food that came in and the gifts, and this is a very giving community, and uh, so um, I remember it was very overwhelming the first time, and I was told that, you know, if you get emotional, just go away, take, a sp take the space, and, and then come back. So we did that, <laughs> and every year since then, uh, I can't remember when we moved here to this building, but it was a major change. <laughs> and we've been sometimes filled to capacity, sometimes you come in a week or two later and you look and go, wow, <laughs> where has everything gone? So, and during COVID time, 
it was um, extremely difficult. The volunteers were not allowed to come in and so the staff had to pick up the slack and then they would take turns coming in too in case one got COVID and then the other one would um, uh, you know, not have to stay home. So um, they would actually, the clients were not allowed in the building and they would have to come to the door. The staff would have to not only accept and, 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 and um, you know, the, the donations, but they have to shut off the shelves, they have to check the dates, which is really the, one of the major things that happens. And then uh, they would have to pack up bags and take them to the door and give them to the clients. They had them scheduled to come in. Um, so, and then when the volunteers were here, we were allowed one, one at a time. We were always masked, so. <laughs> I thrive on it. I am obsessed. You will, Tim will tell you, it's like, she keeps telling me to back off. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and I, I sort of like things my own way. So, but we've all learned to work together because there are now we have other other volunteers at the same time. So um, it's a bit of a social thing, but we're not a lot of time for socializing. So, but it's good. It's really good. And yeah, I do. I do. I look forward to coming back in and getting things straightened up a little bit because <laughs> there's always something to do. Um, well, the people, it, that's one thing. I mean, they're like family. They really are like family now. And they're all just so hardworking and dedicated. It's amazing. I tell my husband that all the time. So um, we, um, I, 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 like, I like organizing. So it is straightening things out and making sure that, um, you know, we check the dates. That's, that's the, tough, the tough thing is really having to look at every single item that comes in to make sure that it isn't expired. And the expired, there is a lot of expired food that comes in. So it's, it's a busy time, especially at Christmas. This last Christmas was amazing. We were piled to the ceiling and it took us some time to get through it because we half the time couldn't volunteer because of COVID. So. So, uh, but I, so you never finish, <laughs> which is more, probably the negative part. <laughs> be, be nice to be finished for when you go home that night and then start again the next day, but you never finish. So you <laughs> have to find a, <laughs> a point there that you can settle with. So. So the exchange is actually under the umbrella of Caledon Community Services and Caledon Community Services has been in this community since 1971. So we've been here for a long time. We're the largest multi-service organization uh, serving a myriad of different clients throughout the community. We have programming for seniors, we have programming around employment and youth employment. Um, and then we have programs that address community needs such as the exchange and our food support program. One other really interesting, uh, innovative solution that we have come up with within uh, our community is uh, a social purpose enterprise. And so we actually have a thrift store that is called Evolve Caledon. It has been um, around for a very long time with different names throughout the years, uh, but it is now called Evolve Caledon and it is a large, beautiful, big shopping uh, space that is located within Bolton. And the really great thing about Evolve Caledon is that all of the donations that come in and are sold, all of the profits go back to support the activities that happen within the exchange and within the community supports program. So when you clean out your basement or when you clean out your closet and you donate that really nice suit and it gets transferred to Evolve to our donation center and then it goes on the floor and it is sold to someone, that sale actually puts cereal and milk on a child's plate in the morning and maybe an apple in their lunch. So it's really important that if you're thinking um, about thrift, that you consider donating and shopping in your own community. And we invite you to 
to come visit our brand new store. We have just uh, merged locations and we have a big, beautiful space for you to come shop with. If you want more information about that, you can definitely visit our website to learn about not only Evolve Caledon, but all our other programs and services. Our website is www.ccs4u.org.